All right, bruh fans, hope everybody's doing well. Yes, I'm doing my review on time this week, and since next week, I believe, is indeed the midseason finale, I'll go ahead and knock that out of the ballpark, too, just to get, you know, the first half of the season behind us. So, this particular video is for Season 3, Episode 9, entitled The Setup. Bill is caught in a bind, and Lydia learns a harsh lesson. Okay, so this particular episode, I think that I will give it a 7 out of 10. You know, remember since I recently binged episode 6 through 8, and this one is obviously the freshest of the bunch. When I compare each episode, I'd have to say that this one stood out above the past three, but not by much. Hence why it's only a 7 out of 10 instead of like an 8 or a 9. So... We're gearing up with the finale or mid-season finale next week. I think we're kind of setting things in motion for that. And, you know, over the past few episodes, I have not been a fan of how uh, Greg and Darla have been acting. And this episode continues that trend. But at the same time, there are certain things that happen that I'm like, okay, I'm actually glad certain things happened the way they did. I'll explain as I get into the episode. I was actually quite surprised that the first scene of this episode was almost 10 minutes long. We got a good 7 minutes, or technically 6 if you don't count the recap. Almost 10 minutes of a scene that takes place at Bill's uh, house, or should I say Bill and Regina and her mother's house, um, before the theme song kicks in. But I'm not going to lie, I had to watch the scene twice because I was so taken aback by that delicious looking food that Hilda put on the table. I think it was uh, macaroni, he had some greens. Uh, I, I think that was either fried chicken or pork chops. I couldn't tell, but either way, my goodness. That's why I can't act because I would just be so distracted. I mean, there are two things that would distract me on set and make me forget my lines. Number one, having an intimate scene with a woman not even an intimate scene like sex but let's say if a woman you know kiss me on the uh, neck or something like that i forget my lines and number two if you have a plate of delicious ass looking food and for continuity sake i can only have but like maybe one bite and i'm a person if i take that first bite and it's like oh shit i'm gonna eat it. i don't care if it's hot or cold okay maybe i do care if it's cold but regardless um Bill is getting out the shower. Pam is actually there. Yet again, it's like, well, damn. I, I remember, Bill, remember when this place used to be just you and maybe when the bros would stop by? Man. All right, so Pam is actually there for dinner. Um, Hilda apparently made a delicious meal. And Bill just wants to bounce. He wants to go for a walk. But before that, you know, Hilda finds out that Pam and Bill don't like each other, which... I kind of thought was established the last time Pam was over there and they had their exchange like Martin and Pam from the Martin show. But hey, continuity, right? We got to establish why they don't like each other. So <laughs> Pam is actually interrogating Bill by saying, wait, you just took a shower and now you're going for a walk. Well, I'm vegan. Vegan. Oh, you're going to skip dinner? That's just rude. No, it's not. I'm vegan. Not going to lie, I was conflicted on who to side with here because Bill had already established that he is vegan and then Hilda is like kind of pushing it on. It's almost like peer pressure, but in this case it's food pressure. And as someone with a weakness for food, I mean, Bill, there were greens on the plate and you got the macaroni, but then again, vegan means like clean eating and no meat. So, I mean, some people do put like pork and whatnot in the greens so there could have been some compromise there at least you could have took one of those little cornbread biscuits or something that's what you could have at least took the biscuit but i'm not yeah it's like hilda is a mixed bag for me there obviously she's overbearing and intrusive but then there are other times where it's like this woman is so sweet she didn't have to make dinner but she did and you know but then it's like but she changed around the furniture without asking anyone but again, a plate of food, I'd be like, you know what, Miss Hilda? You, you, you all right. You all right. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm just tripping. But that food kept my attention for the entire scene. But in any case, Bill leaves. And 
Pam and Hilda know something's up. It's like Regina is just letting it happen, but Pam reads into it like, no, 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 no. I know she got a plan. She just being chill about it. Regina's like, no, I don't. And then there's kind of the back and forth between Hilda and Pam about, you know, not eating a lot of food and, you know, women, you know, um, men like women with some meat on their bones. And they're like, no, women like us. I mean, men like us the way we are, which again, is one of the things I, do, I I like about the Hilda character is the fact that there's the conflict or what's the phrase here? Uh, generational gap, you know, like she's always kind of thrown back or aghast at how the modern day dating world is nothing like it was in her time. You know, what worked back then doesn't work now. That's actually kind of touched upon sometimes in House of Pain, specifically when it comes down to the way Ella sees like Calvin's lifestyle you know Miranda and Laura and whatnot like there have been moments where it's like ma you know I know back in your day divorce is taboo but you know nowadays that's how it is and yeah that actually is true but regardless um this scene just cracked me up because Hilda decides to go lay down and I'm like hey, but you you talking about Bill not eating just bouncing and not eating and then you want Pam and Regina to chow down, but Miss Hilda, I don't think I saw you take a bite of that food yourself. But then again, I let it go because she was slaving over the stove all day, and you know, obviously she moved that furniture by herself. So if she needs to take a you know a little nap or something, then wake up and have that midnight snack of a plate of. Well, I need a nap, and my mouth is drooling right now. Think about that plate. Okay, so she wants to lay down, so she goes to the back and. When Pam out of nowhere just said, I love you, mama. I love you too, baby. I don't know why the hell that made me laugh so hard because I didn't see it coming. It just came out of nowhere. And I'm like, you know what? If she made me a plate like that, hell, I call her mama myself. <laughs> all right, all right. Serious note. So it turns out Pam um, has a tracking app. I, I or Basically, she has like a thing where she can track Bill's phone. And Pam is like, oh my gosh, you want to do... I can't really do a good Pam impression, but I know when I do try to sound like Pam, my face just needs to light up because she's like, oh my God, you're tracking him. We should go. And I'm like, damn, Pam, I'm not a big fan of your love of drama and keeping things going in this marriage, you know, between Bill and Regina. But again, the plate, I just thought the damn plate, I just... Okay, so in any case... She wants to go. Regina's like, I don't know because I just don't trust him. I put the tracer on him on his phone. But if I go over there now, I'll be busted. He's going at an area or, or an address that I don't know. You don't know. So something must be going down. So they tell Miss Hilda that they're going for a walk. And it's like they want to walk the food off. And Hilda, continuity, I loved it. You barely touched your plate. Um, we're going to, you know, walk off what we ate and then we'll come back and finish it. And then when they leave, Hill's like, you know what? Going to have me slaving over all day for nothing. Yeah, I don't blame her. I just love the self-awareness of this scene and like, yeah, I, I, I spent all this effort cooking and ain't nobody going to touch it. I can't be mad at this scene. I know you're like, Jeremy, this doesn't sound like you at all. I mean, this scene almost lasted 10 minutes. Shouldn't you, you know, rip it apart for dragging time? I honestly thought I would, but the fact that it was so self-aware, I actually loved it. Now, I actually messaged, I think, like, maybe half a dozen people I've talked with briefly, um, not cast members, but I mean just regular viewers like myself, and some had different thoughts about the episode so far, like, well, in, in this particular scene. It's just the fact that Pam is egging on the situation, and you want to catch him, but it's like, my thing is, why even, why even bother staying married knowing that it's not going to work? I feel like, you know, Tom brought it up, what was it, in uh, episode six about Bill giving up his own happiness and freedom to make Regina happy, but it just seems to me that neither one of them are actually happy in their marriage, you know, it's just the fact that I just feel like it's a waste of everybody's time. It's just, you know, the fact that Regina just seems to be completely indifferent to how Bill feels. I look, again, I, I haven't been in a relationship 
in the uh, what, 15 years of what was that girlfriend I had in 10th grade of high school that tells you right there it's been, yeah it's been about 15 years so it's just one of those things where I, I, I couldn't tell you what's properly you know what proper etiquette in the marriage is but I just feel like the whole testing thing is dumb I, I don't even know why Regina got married to Bill you know remember towards the end of uh, da, 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 season 2 it was Regina doesn't know what to do Bill invites her to stay he pulls out a ring after they have sex that very night and Regina went from being unsure if she wanted to move in to oh my god Bill you ain't playing okay I want to get married tomorrow there was a lot of okay this is what and then you why expect Bill to be okay with all this change so quickly the fact that your mom just popped up out of nowhere the fact that she's like running the household the fact that she has dogs coming apparently that's a lot so you can't blame Bill for acting the way he is now remember <clears throat> excuse me not defending Bill's behavior because don't get me wrong I want to get to that he skipped out on eating Miss Hilda's delicious plate of food that she prepared but later on in the episode he was definitely eating some groceries but we'll get to that in a couple minutes but I just feel like when it comes to Regina, I don't understand the point of this marriage. I mean, go back towards the end of season two. I think it was in the finale when, you know, Bill talked about, oh, I'm getting help. And um, I'll, and I think Regina said something along the lines of, Bill, I'm not going to police you. I'm not going to be a helicopter wife uh, in terms of like you cheating and all. But then you put a tracer on his phone. So it's like a weird contradiction on that one so it's just one of those things where I it, they're just too many games being played and I don't know who the winner I mean obviously Pam is the winner in all this because she wants to you know um, she, she wants she's pretty much Pam is Candace from Phineas and Ferb she wants to bust her brothers when they're doing wrong or what she thinks is wrong basically tell the parents but it's Pam in this situation who wants to show, I guess, or prove to Regina that Bill ain't shit, which everybody already knows. I mean, that was the whole purpose of season two with the, hey, Bill, take me home. And then, you know, Regina told me to come on to you to test you. And I don't know. Play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. You know what? Let me go ahead and skip to the Bill and Claudia scene, and then I'll hop back to the whole Tom situation, what goes down in his apartment. So, um, like I said, Bill shows up to the address Claudia gave him, and it turns out this is the location that she, you know, cleans and upkeeps, and, you know, Bill's like, wait, is this somebody else's house? Oh, no, it's an area, you know, I work for and all this stuff, so we're good. And, uh offers him a drink she can tell he's a bit tense and you know not really feeling all right about the situation but eventually she gets him to loosen up once she you know unloosens or undoes the belt around her jacket and she's wearing a uh, uh you know i don't know what i couldn't take my eyes off of more in this episode that plate of food or when claudia took off her jacket it was the plate of food but in any case i do feel like wait a minute this uh, uh scantily clad ensemble reminded me of that one outfit fatima had uh back in season three of sisters but that's neither here nor there bill is like wait 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 this is wrong but then after a couple kisses on the neck on his chest and then you know when the legs spread open you know what <sighs> i think i'm okay with this so then we get about four minutes of them going at it. But then we hop over to Tom's apartment. Now, Tom gets home from work. Greg's on the couch. And, you know, Tom is checking in to make sure Greg still isn't, you know, in his feelings about earlier. And the word pissy gets thrown around a lot. So Greg apparently doesn't want to be called pissy, even though he says he wasn't. But if you go back to episode uh, seven, I think he was definitely pissy. So, what saved this scene for me, Tom was the MVP of the episode, is the fact that Tom literally checked Greg and put him in his place. Like, yo, this is my apartment, so you're not going to talk to me like that. Realize that, hey, you know what? I get it. 
when you were married, you made it seem, you know, I mean, your wife made you feel like she was always talking down to you, that she was telling you what to do, but we're the bros, the people who have your best interest at heart. So when we make suggestions and whatnot, we're not telling you what to do. We're trying to help you. And I love the fact that Tom put his foot down. But, you know, it turns out that Dina's actually going to come by the apartment uh, because she actually asked him out or because she was apparently interested in me. So let me hop in the shower. There's some wine I'm going to put out. And, um, you know, then I'll come out and we're going to go down the street, probably get something to drink, come on back. So I just love the fact that, you know, Greg, who was in his feelings about everything, was able to be put in his place. Like, hey, you know what? My bad. So he also thought that Dina was also, you know, coming over for him, but it wasn't the case whatsoever. All right. So uh, from there, we go over to Dina knocking on the door. And don't worry, the Alice and John stuff, I'll save that for last. So Dina knocks and Greg just just yells, come in, shit. And I'm like, damn, sheesh, so much for hospitality. All right, so I guess he said that because he knew it was Dina. I mean, in Greg's mind, it would be Dina because Darla certainly wouldn't come by after what she did in episode eight. Am I right? But yeah, Dina comes in and uh, he's just short with her and whatnot about Hey, you know, uh, Tom said he's in the shower and there's wine, so you can go over there and drink it. Oh, okay. Um, and then there's kind of a back and forth in regards to, uh, you know what? I think, you know, things worked out the way they were supposed to because uh, you're a bit too boyish for me in regards to how you act. And I'm interested in men, so they kind of have a back and forth about that before she goes over there to, you know, drink the wine. And then another person knocks, like, who the hell could this be? And, I mean, Greg is just too through. <laughs> and um, Darla actually comes in to apologize, and Greg is like, hey, uh, this really isn't the best time because there's somebody else there. Uh, Dina's in the kitchen. And it was like, wait, so you're already, nope, she's actually here for Tom, um, who's taking forever in the shower. And after Dina introduced herself, Darla actually notices the wine like wait that's my wine and yes yeah, the wine i gave to him and i don't know um possession is nine tenths of the law but she gave him that bottle of wine and in the last episode she was apparently done with greg so okay i don't drink so i don't really know how this goes down but let me imagine if i bought a girl a bottle of Welcher sparkling and then I gave her said bottle and then we kind of have a falling out and for whatever reason I I go over to her place to apologize or something and then I see another guy there drinking that Welchers should I be do I have the right to be in my feelings I don't know it just felt like at this part of the episode okay um I'm actually on Greg's side somewhat because out of nowhere out of nowhere um these two gang up on Greg for being an asshole and you know it, I mean so I mean Greg's like wait so uh was that it um so are you gonna leave now I mean after the way Darla reacted in the last episode I don't think I want to talk to her either but then I know where Dina's like oh <laughs> there he is acting like an asshole wait he was acting like an asshole to you too oh wait so that's why he was acting the way at work because of you and like nah because I don't know but in any case um Darla just gets comfortable it's like wait y'all sitting down like yeah we're just gonna go oh we just getting started and I feel like this some this reminded me of what Pam and Regina did to basically all the bros last season after, you know, Mike and Pam got into it at Tom's place. And it's like, man, this ain't even y'all's home. What y'all doing? So Tom actually comes out. <laughs> I love, I think Darla was the one to say, oh, look at you, James Bond. I ain't gonna lie. That was a funny line. So they, uh, you know, bounce. And um, from there, oh, he's like, oh, my bad. I didn't know that was, you know, your wine that you gave Greg. I'll get, I'll get you another bottle. So they decided to go out. And after that, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Greg was like, you can go too. Oh, wow, it's like that? Uh, yeah, Darla, I don't see why it wouldn't be like that. So then she leaves and Greg is pretty much alone with his thoughts. And 
Again, this was the only portion of the episode where I'm like, Greg, I understand where you're coming from. But the rest of the episode, again, asshole, but Tom put you in your place. Didn't have to go off on Dina the way you did. And the whole Darla thing, I actually sided with Greg on that one. So, the final part to talk about here. Back at the apartment, Alice rolls. I mean, <laughs> it's funny because Darla talk, uh, talked about um, Tom looking like James Bond. But then you had freaking Alice coming out of her room like Batwoman. I mean, uh, Catwoman and all black. Or Black Widow and all black. Because she was ready to throw down at Lydia's job. So, John, you know is just talk, telling her, his mom, like, look, we're not going down there, starting some trouble. And apparently, she actually handed John a frying pan. Like, hey, if she starts to swing on me, you go ahead and whack her with this pan. And the thing about it is, okay, I did watch those three episodes back to back to back, but I thought Alice's whole thing was not suspecting Lydia because things just aren't adding up for her to actually be the one to vandalize their home. But now all of a sudden she wants to go down there and be some ass because later on when they finally get there and confront her, I'm just thinking like, wait a minute, didn't Alice have a tracking app on her vibrator? Yes, that's a weird sentence to say. So wouldn't you be able to track it to its location or give it to the police to confirm whether or not Lydia was the one that did it? Because truth be told, I don't think she did it. Somebody in the comments in one of my videos like, what if Darla did it? I'm like, <gasps> I don't think so, but that is an interesting theory. But in any case, they go down to the uh, bar, they confront Lydia, and she's really trying to tell them that she's innocent. And look, she's crazy, but based on the look in her eyes, I feel like it's safe to say that she did not do it. But Alice ain't leaving. Alice don't want to hear it. She threatens to whoop that ass until Lydia gets in her face and tells them to leave because she's getting upset. And the episode ends with Alice slapping Lydia across the face and pretty much unleashing the beast. And John's face said it all when he reacted to the slap. And that's the end of the episode. So yeah, I thought this episode was better than the last three. Definitely the best one in the past month. But uh, did have some flaws here and there. But overall, I did enjoy it for what it was. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And remember, watch the bruh content because it really will give me more inspiration to review the back half of season three. Go ahead and like the video, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description box below and I'll catch you in the next one.